Marvel Snap had a balance patch drop this week that changed a number of cards, primarily targeting the Thanos and Shuri decks that have been kind of omnipresent in the format, looking to bring them down a peg to allow some other things in the format to find some breathing room. It's been about three days since those changes happened, and myself and many others have played countless hours of Marvel Snap trying to figure the format out. What's the results been? Well, today we're gonna run through what looked to be the early front runners in this developing Marvel Snap metagame. If you ask me for my pick for best deck as this format's been developing so far, I think the answer is still just Shuri. They took one stat away from She-Hulk, they took two stats away from Red Skull, they made it so Taskmaster can't copy something that's been blown up, but Shuri remains the same, doubling the stats of the next card that we play. Armor, and Cosmo also remain the same, being able to protect our massive threats that put big stats into play. And while this deck list here, as you see, no longer contains the card Arrow, since she's a bit less powerful now, um, they also don't have to play against that powerful Arrow either. Um, the Shuri deck having to worry about where its plays were going to go in the final moments of the game, possibly getting ripped out from under an armor or a Cosmo where they could be exposed to Shang-Chi is no longer the case nearly as frequently. And I've even heard some people go as far to say they actually think the Shuri deck is better now than it was before the balance patch because Arrow is so much weaker now. My initial impressions of the Thanos deck after the changes is that it is meaningfully weaker than it was before. Quinjet no longer being able to make the stones free means that it's not a card that this archetype wants to play anymore. And Space Stone moving a card to its location instead of away from it makes Lockjaw easier to have counterplay into and be a lot less powerful and flexible than it was before. That being said, the Thanos deck in the previous format was really, really good and making it worse in all of those ways definitely works to bring it in line with everything else that's going on in the format as opposed to making it unplayable. My initial read is that I think the changes they made surrounding Thanos seemed like they actually hit the mark and this deck seems like it's a powerful option to be playing, but it definitely does not feel like it's overbearing anymore. So if you enjoy playing with stones or putting leech into play, this deck is a reasonable thing to be doing, but it's also a lot less omnipresent on the ladder in my anecdotal experience, which also means we're getting leech lust, which is a happy upside to making this deck worse than it was prior. I wasn't sure how Arrow was going to play out after initially reading the balance pass. They gave her her eighth point of power back, but made it so she only moves the last card an enemy plays in a given turn. Overall, after playing with Arrow for a number of hours after the changes, I think she's actually ended up being a pretty reasonable card. Is she the best card in Marvel Snap anymore? Certainly not. But she's definitely a serviceable tech card that's useful in a number of specific matchups, such as Galactus. And if you build your deck around her a little bit, such as setting up a wave on turn five, so your opponent can only play one thing on turn six, or utilizing her in tandem with something like Sandman that restricts your opponent's plays, her effect can still be really powerful. I think they hit this balance change on the head as well. Arrow seems like a card that you can play if you want to and even build around her a little bit without being a card that's just the best in slot for five drops in basically every deck in the format. If you're looking for a deck that can leverage Arrow well, something along the lines of this would be my recommended starting point. More specifically, the combination of Wave alongside Arrow and She-Hulk seems really powerful. You Wave on turn five with two extra energy up, and then you can play Arrow and She-Hulk on the last turn of the game, adding a good amount of stats to the board while dictating where your opponent's single play is able to end up at. I definitely don't think we've seen the current metagame fully develop. I think Shuri popping up as the early frontrunner is just the easiest, obvious choice. It was hurt the least by the set of balance changes that we had, and it's a powerful, proactive deck that people had the cards for and they wanted to pick up and jam some games with. That being said, the Shuri deck is fairly one-dimensional, and there's a few different ways in which we can attack it, a number of which have been given more room to breathe in the format thanks to the fact that the Thanos deck is on the decline. Let's go ahead and run through different ways that I'm interested in working to attack this metagame that we're working our way into. The number one card I'm interested in building a number of decks around to try and combat Shuri is definitely Valkyrie. 
Valkyrie is similar to Shang-Chi in some ways, but most notably she can get a Red Skull that's hiding behind a copy of armor, and she buffs up our own smaller things, which can also take advantage of the fact that Red Skull has an ongoing to make our board bigger, which can break the symmetry that Valkyrie is creating into a given path. I think there's a ton of different directions you can build with this card from controlling shells with Professor X to combo oriented shells like the Bast Valkyrie Patriot deck that I featured as well as the Mr. Negative deck. Um, I would love to know in the comments what kind of Valkyrie ideas you have because this card has a lot of different directions we can go to get things figured out in. The other card that I think gains a lot from this balance pass that could be a good tool for attacking the Shuri deck is Storm. Storm flooding a location and locking it out on the fourth turn is usually happening early enough that the Shuri deck can't get set up inside of it. And with the Space Stone no longer giving Thanos free reign to move about the board, Storm locking other people out of a location that aren't playing Shuri is a very real thing to be doing in the format. Storm in tandem with other cards that control how Shuri can deploy to the board, such as Goose or Spider-Man, really feels like it could be a legitimate strategy for forcing the Shuri deck into a corner where it doesn't matter if they're hiding behind things like Armor or Cosmo if they can't deploy their big threats where they want to deploy them to actually be able to win the game. To close on a sample deck list, leaning into the second idea of controlling the board state, these 12 cards are the ones that I've submitted for playing in the grand finals of the asynchronous tournament that I've been playing in over the course of the last few weeks. I think this deck has a pretty reasonable matchup into Shuri with Goose and Storm in combination with Shang-Chi and Teenage Warhead. This deck is also doing something similar to the sample arrow deck list we highlighted earlier in this video with Wave into She-Hulk plus another card on the final turn of the game. And speaking of Arrow, if you find yourself lacking the latest Series 5 release in Teenage Warhead, I think Arrow or possibly even Juggernaut are reasonable cards to replace over her that play well on the last turn of the game while still controlling what your opponent is looking to do. Finally, I wanted to close out with a couple other deck recommendations for people looking for a little variety in their lives. I was shifting through the best performing decks post patch on untapped.gg, and this mostly stock Sarah list actually has pretty good metrics. I could see why. Arrow can help you control where your opponent's Red Skull ends up on turn five against Shuri, and then you have Shang-Chi to go ahead and knock it down, while this deck also just has a pretty proactive game plan of putting a bunch of stats into play with things like Mysterio and Bishop and Killmonger cracking Nova to pump up your entire board. The second deck list I wanted to highlight from untapped.gg stats is actually a Dracula Zoo list that we had highlighted here on the channel before the balance patch happened. Red Skulls lost two points of stats in this deck, which makes it a touch worse with Dracula, but when we're not playing Red Skull with Dracula, the modifications to it actually make it a bit better in this deck list. Previously, Red Skull was only seven points of stats when you played it into a full opposing path, and now it actually ends up on nine points of stats, only giving each enemy card plus one stat. If you're looking for a deck that's low to the ground and swarming the board, this one is very reasonable still by the metrics. As always, I'd love to know your experience with Snap post-patch. What does your segment of the ladder look like? If you enjoyed my musings on the topic, be sure to snap that like button and make sure you're subscribed to the channel to stop back again real soon for some more Marvel Snap content here on YouTube.